Hey, 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 good afternoon. It is Hangout Live with your guy DMAC. Uh, Friday afternoon, beautiful day here in Colorado. Gorgeous, gorgeous day. And um, it's great to be with you. Did not get my workout in today, so I'm going to have to try to figure that out. Maybe get that done a little bit later. And, you know, the sun gets out, everything looks, um, kind of pushes everything back. <laughs> so probably try to get some sort of workout in later. But great to be with you today. Glad you're here. Um, if you're new to the Hangout, it just is simply that. It's me hanging out. We go as long as anybody's interested, and um, it's based on your comments. So the show, um, this show, this hour or so kind of flies or dies <laughs> based on, uh, you know, what you have to put into it. I'm going to get the masters going here. I've got Fubo. Lucky to have Fubo. And... Uh, And uh, so we'll catch up with everything going on with the Masters. We have the Rockies starting at 5 o'clock. So we'll flip over to the Rockies, which is kind of cool. We'll have a little bit of a watch along there. I'm not sure if I'll do bottom of the eighth, which is kind of like five to go. And, uh, yeah. So just catching up on the Masters just a little bit. So I can see that uh, DeChambeau shot a one over. He's at six under. Scotty Scheffler's at six under through 13. So he has a chance to put a bigger number up. Max Homa is at six under. He's done with this day at 71. Tiger finished, I believe, at plus one. Oh, Rory's at plus three with a long putt for par. So he's not having a great couple days. He's got a twister going left to right. Let's see if he can figure this one out. Downhill. I think it's left to right. Yep. Yep. Too much. Cooked it. Cooked it. He just needed to start it. A uh, ball outside the right edge or left edge, rather. Let it fall. Didn't. Didn't read it the right way. Uh, do they clinch if they win? You're talking about the Nuggets. Uh, no, they do not, unfortunately. I assume you're talking about the Nuggets. If, if you aren't, Nick, let me know. But um, it would help. They have a one-game lead over Oklahoma City and a one-game lead over Minnesota. So, I mean, depending on uh, what happens. Hold on. I can look at it. Schedule for tonight. I mean, maybe they could clinch. Let me see who who's playing. Uh, uh, Minnesota is hosting Atlanta and Oklahoma City is what? Are they not playing tonight? Do, 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 do. So I don't see Oklahoma City playing. They play Saturday. Yeah. So they're hosting. Oklahoma is hosting Dallas on Saturday. Let's see who Oklahoma City finishes with. So they've got, oh, wait, they do play tonight. I'm sorry. My bad. Wait, is this Oklahoma City? It is. Okay. Well, I don't, I'm sorry. I got that wrong. So my bad. They uh, are playing tonight against Milwaukee, and then they're playing Sunday against Dallas, both home games. So if. Milwaukee beats Oklahoma City. And if uh, let's go. Oops. So we gotta be rooting for uh Milwaukee to beat Oklahoma City. Gotta root for the Nuggets, of course, to simply take care of business against the Spurs. And Minnesota, Minnesota is playing the Hawks. So if Milwaukee wins, the Hawks win, and the Nuggets win, 
then it's done. Then the game against Memphis is um, nothing. Uh, so we'll see. That's all happening tonight. And then everybody wraps up on Sunday. We shall see. Game is at 6 o'clock tonight. So we will have five to go around 8.10 or so. Um, the Rockies, like I said, get going at 5 o'clock. We got the Masters, which is out in Georgia. So, of course, it's 6.30 there. It looks like they got plenty of daylight. Pretty windy. I do love watching the Masters, not going to lie. It's great. Wesley, good afternoon. Good to see you, pal. Always good to see you. Thanks for being here. Appreciate it. Everything here is brought to you by Ed Prather Real Estate. Ed Prather's the number one trusted team, real estate team in Colorado. They are incredible. I consider them really good friends um, as well as partners. Ed and his team are phenomenal for any of your real estate needs. Check them out at edprather.com. And we are going to get Ed and his team on with us starting next week um, to talk about certain things. And uh, again, I'm so grateful for everybody paying attention. And, you know, Ed's, we had a great partnership with Avid Caddy. We had an amazing event. Uh, and other than aside from Avid Caddy, Ed's our guy. And uh, I hope we get more folks on board. I my my friends at Trek Bicycle Boulder are incredible. I love them. I, I've got a loner bike. I'm foster carrying a uh, a, a Trek. I'm, I'm I'm hoping to adopt. So any love you can give to our sponsors means so so much. Cannot tell you how meaningful that is. And for those of you who showed up to our event on Monday night, I'm so grateful. So thankful, so grateful. Um, just really, really cool. Uh, Braden, hello, hello. Braden, good to see you there, pal. Hello, hello to you. All right, here is Desham. No, that's not Deshambo. Who is this? Oh, hold on, let me see who this is real quick. Oh, that's cool. So Scotty Scheffler. Okay. And here's uh, Rory McIlroy, who's struggling. Plus four. They're, they're on 15. They're saying he's in a fight. He's plus four. He's 10 shots back. Oh, he had a good drive there on 15. 15 is a um it's a possible eagle hole. You gotta you gotta get a great drive and but it's a shorter hole. It's definitely makeable. John Rahm is plus six. Whoa, he's not gonna make the cut. So he's uh approaching 15. Decent shot. Wow. Man, he is gonna. I think the cut's at plus five right now. Let me see. Uh, 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 yeah, I don't know why finding the... Well, it's so tough just to find the leaderboard. Shouldn't be that difficult, right? But if I just go to ESPN... All right, let's see what's what here. Uh, 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 cut is at, oh, wow, all right, plus five. Projected cut is at plus five. Oh, so the, see, here's what's going on. The conditions are much more difficult in the afternoon than they were in the morning. And uh, so that's that's helped push the cut down a little bit. Adam Scott's at plus six. Um. Ricky Fowler's, I'm just big names, plus six. John Rahm at plus six. So Rahm's got to get it going to make the cut. That's crazy. 
Zach Johnson plus seven. Mike Weir plus seven. Sergio Garcia plus seven. Does <clears throat> I'm just looking. Jordan Spieth plus nine. Bubba Watson plus ten. Yikes. Fred Couples, he's old, but still, I mean that's impressive actually. Plus twelve. Dustin Johnson plus thirteen. What? Phil Mickelson is plus three for par. Missed it. <laughs> I'm not a Phil guy. I I was out on Phil. Then I kind of liked Phil. And um, and now I'm out on him again. I, I I think the live stuff, the gambling stuff, it's just he's just an icky guy. He's an icky dude. So now he's gonna bogey 18. Let's get that weird punting grip. There you go. Phil finishes at plus four, second round 75. So looks like he'll make the cut. Barely. Yeah, I'm not a Phil guy. I do like John Rahm, but, you know, I just this live PGA stuff, which I don't feel as strongly about anymore. Nice putt, John Rahm. Nice. Is that a birdie or is that saving par? Birdie. Birdie on 15. Nice. And he doubled 14. Yeah, that was needed. Uh, yeah, with the live stuff, um, just golf in general. Uh, I'm going to separate the majors. I'll just say, okay, whatever. And I'm not going to get caught up into it. But I didn't like it in the beginning. But, you know, it's all a bunch of greedy guys. So I'll just sort of not pay attention except for the Masters and be good with that. Oh, Tiger chipped in on a shot on a hole. That's nice. Tiger has a little bit of a... Tiger is yoked in the shoulders and the arms. Like, he is big. He obviously lifts. He's got a, he's got a little... Uh, he's got a little gut. So, first time I've ever seen Tiger with a little bit of a... He's got a little... Uh, he's got a little spare tire going on there. And he's 48. Hey, 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 I'm not... I'm the last person to give anybody body shaming, but it's not significant. Just like, oh, that's kind of interesting. I haven't seen that before. I We should all have that sort of spare tire, though. Because he looks like he could bench press a house. Got a little Mark Schlereth physique going on right there. Not going to lie. Uh, Braden, who is the team in the Western Conference that would cause you the most worry if the Nuggets saw them in the playoffs. Minnesota by a mile. The, the most is Minnesota. You're going to have issues there. Good afternoon, DMAC. Hope you got plenty of rest last night. I should have, right? Should have. I, You know, I think I was just residually tired from a very long week. I'll, I'll probably feel much better tomorrow. Soda at Tiger. <laughs> oh, my God. I mean, we should all we, we should all look like that, though. Just, just, you notice things. That's all. That's funny. Soda. Yeah, Tiger. State of the art. SodaWeightLoss.com, Tiger. Check it out. Uh, that's funny. Yeah, I will see on Sunday. On Sunday, we have... Now, yeah, maybe we could do a little watch long for the back nine for the Masters. That might be kind of fun. The, uh, the, the Avs are playing the Golden Knights. Actually, that would work out good. The Avs play the Golden Knights at 1.30. We could do a five-to-go slash back nine watch along Sunday afternoon. That would be kind of fun. We'll do that. And I'm not sure what time the Rockies play. Maybe they're in the middle of that, too. I just don't know where to go with the, the five-to-goes or, you know, bottom of the eighth with the Rockies. I do love it. And I love breaking down baseball. I love talking about it. I love talking... You know, the, the fun thing about baseball for me is that kind of like a chess game, every time you move a piece, it has 
a ripple effect on everything else. So the count, it's di- a 1-1 one, one pitch is different than a 2-0 pitch. is different than an 0-2 pitch. Everything slightly changes on every pitch. And it's those nuances that are really cool. That's why I say, even if it isn't obvious, a one-run win or loss is to the compliment or criticism of the manager. I do firmly believe that if you win a game by one, the manager has done something to help the team win that's significant. And if you lose by one, same thing in, in, in reverse. There's something you could have done better as a manager in a one-run game, or you deserve a pat on the back for getting that one-run win. But, you know, and I think in close games, okay, a little bit more, but more specifically one runs, one-run games. Um, and then blowouts a blow. Any, anything over five runs to me is just like, eh, you know. Uh, uh, five... Five run or more difference to me is just they're better than you. You're better than them. That's about that. There's not much a manager can do. Not really. I I wouldn't think that if you lose or win a game by five run, one, you shouldn't get complimented. Two, you shouldn't be critiqued. It's just, it's pretty simple in Major League Baseball. Either you're pitching or, and usually it's pitching. And a five run plus win, it's, it's usually just the pitching. So that's the trick right there. It's kind of a little bit more boring without Tiger playing. I'm not going to lie. There's Rory. He laid up. I guess nobody really interests me all that much other than um, Tiger. Is that bad? I don't know. Hmm. The um boy, the interpreter for Shohei is getting drilled. He is he is in big trouble. That dude is going away f- for a while. <clears throat> Uh, this Rashi Rice story is driving 119 miles per hour before causing a six vehicle crash. Wow. His Lamborghini reached 119 miles per hour, 4.5 seconds before the collision. Corvette driven by SMU wide receiver Teddy Knox traveling 116 miles per hour before the chain reaction collision, slowing down to 91, 1.5 seconds before the crash. That is awful. Seven people with injuries. The two cars made multiple aggressive maneuvers to get through traffic. So they were racing through traffic. That is horrible. Terrible. Awful, 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 awful. See that sometimes out on the highways, even driving on 25 or 225 and just, you know, horrible, man. Other people's lives, messing with them. Despicable, actually. Terrible. It's not your playground out there. That story makes me sick. Makes me sick. Arrogant, irresponsible. Disgusting. Disgusting story. Uh, Let's see. (laughs) What is this? William Arroyo, the main baseball agent for the Bad Bunny-led agency, Remus Sports, had his certification for Major League Baseball revoked after a union investigation into complaints from other agents about impromptu benefits. Bad Bunny led agency faces sanctions. Just the headline is funny. The story actually bores me, but the headline is funny. Uh, Klingon from UConn is going to turn pro. Okay. 
Seven foot two sophomore Donovan Klingen, one of the cornerstones, blah, 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 will enter the 2024 NBA draft. Number three prospect expected to be in the running to become the number one pick in the June draft. Okay. Well, we'll see how he does in the pros. So, I mean, listen, he's won two championships. He's eligible for the draft. He's seven foot two. You're going to be a top five pick. He's 20 years old. What a future for him. Seven foot seven wingspan. Uh, yeah, I, I could see that guy wherever he goes being um pretty important player for whoever he goes to. Probably a defensive player. He's not much of an offensive player. He averaged 15.3 points, 8.3 rebounds, 3.2 blocks. That's a lot. Because if you're blocking the ball 3.2 times a game, um, the 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 amount that you're influencing shots is, is staggering if you're getting that many blocks. Think about the almost blocks. I mean, and that definitely impacts a game. So, okay. All right, see how he does. It's tricky, though. It's not easy, man. Every team's got them. Here's John Rahm on 16, plus 5. Just He's fooling around with the cut, which is set at plus 5 right now. Pin placement is uh, back. A terrible, I mean, like the most unfun pin placement on 16 is probably today. The most fun, of course, is Sunday where you hit that hill and it just, the ball rolls almost into the hole every single time, which is awesome. The pin placement on 16, 16 here today is like the most boring. <laughs> it's in a hard place to get to. Nobody's, it makes the whole much tougher. That's for sure. Tiger Wood says, I have a chance. Tiger is, he made the cut, first of all. And Tiger Woods, 15 major championships. Wow. Five of the Masters. It's crazy. So he's going to likely break a tournament. Well, he'll make the cut. Even par 72. One over par, tied for 28th. Yeah, he'll make the cut. He's never missed the cut at the Masters as a professional. That's actually pretty amazing, considering everything he's come back from. Uh, and the leader is at minus six. He's at plus one. I mean, you need a big day, obviously. Tiger, it means I have a chance going into the weekend. I'm here. I have a chance to win the golf tournament. I don't know if they're all going to finish today, but I'm done. I got my two rounds in. Just need some food and some caffeine, and I'll be good to go. 48 years old, man. 48. I'm tired. I've been out there for a while competing, grinding. It's been a long 23 holes, long day. Uh, but me and my caddy really did some good fighting today. We got a chance. Lance Bennett is his caddy. Okay. Well, it would make the weekend a lot more interesting, that's for sure, if you can put together an amazing day tomorrow. That'd be great. I'm all, I'm all for it. Uh, let's see what we got here. Soda for Tiger, yeah. The narrative, the narrative charge behind Luca for MVP is starting to get extremely loud. <laughs> Jokic is going to win the MVP. It's not going to be close. And any other kind of conversation is ridiculous um, and a waste of time. He is going to run away with it. It's going to be a slaughter. That's what that's going to be. A slaughter. And that is tonight at 6 o'clock. So, um, I appreciate everybody uh, hanging in there. If you got any other questions, if not, we can wrap this up kind of... Uh, early but i do appreciate everybody watching you know i want to try something real quick while i got you here i want to try something that i have not tried before 
Let's see if I can do this. Uh, I don't think I can do this. Yeah, I don't think I can. No, nope. I got to wait for it to post. Okay. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Okay. All right, let's say uh, Broussard already said he's voting Luca. That's one vote, but still. Eh, yeah, okay. I mean, there'll be some dopey things like that. But you won't hear from the vast majority of people who are going to vote, and the vast majority of people are probably smarter than Chris Broussard. It, it would be... All right. I, I mean, it's, it's hard to imagine and fathom anything but um, Yoke winning. I'd be disappointed. It would, it would piss me off. It really would. Man, it is so windy at the Masters. It, the course is usually so clean and clear. There's all sorts of just crap all over the place because of the wind. Kind of crazy. All right, let me look at some more um, headlines. Today, just make sure I got everything here. Let me check my boy, Cliss. See if there's any news. Congratulations to DU. Best of luck tomorrow. Um, that is super exciting. So we'll be keeping tabs on that. But that's um, we also have the Avs against the Jets. It's a huge afternoon game. But, but we'll definitely be keeping um, an eyeball out on DU. Super pumped for them. They could win their 10th national championship. Crazy, right? All right, Michael, let's see. I'm just checking to see if we got some Broncos news. Oh, they got Scotty Gange covering. Good for Scotty. That's fun. It'd be a fun thing to cover. I love covering sports. I love traveling to cover sports. Love, love it. It's one of the most fun things to do. Yeah, uh, Luke McCaffrey was in for a visit. As was Roger Rosengarten, who has been mentored by Tyler Columbus. It's so cool. And Colorado State tight end Dallin Holker was in too. Luke McCaffrey came for a visit. 71 catches, 992 yards, 13 touchdowns at Rice. Was a quarterback, converted a wide receiver, and was fantastic. I think Luke would be an incredible pick in the fourth round. I think he would make the team, and I think he would contribute right away. I, 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 I'm a big fan of all, all of those things happening. I think that'd be a great value. It'd fit a need. Um, it doesn't hurt that there's some family legacy. I mean, that would be amazing. But I, it's not a charity case. He certainly has earned it and deserves it. Broncos visit with cornerback Levi Wallace. Is that a free agent? No, a veteran quarterback. Six years started with the Bills, then Steelers. So we're getting to the very odd point of free agency. We are we are digging deep into the discount bin in free agency, that's for sure. You know, I haven't really watched a lot of rock. Oh, there, there it is. It's like a Rockies channel on FUBA. That's so crazy. All it is is just for the Rockies. That's it. There's nothing else on that channel. It's just there for the Rockies. That is so wild. And uh, yeah. All right. So we got the Rockies going soon. We got the Masters finishing up. Uh, thoughts on Trey Young to the Spurs in the offseason? I have no thoughts on that, except Trey Young is an unbelievable player. They're going to have a ton of money. Is that the big rumor? Damn it, Bobby. I mean, that makes sense. They have a ton of money to play with. Um, they're going to have another high draft pick. I mean, this is a dangerous team. This Spurs team is a dangerous team. So... Uh, yeah, I mean, if if Trey Young, I mean, they're going to have some studs there. I think in a very short period of time, I think in 
Um, next year, I think they'll be battling for the playoffs. And in two years, they'll be a top six team. And then you go from there. That's the big trade rumor. Wemby and Young would be crazy. Uh, yeah, but they got the money to do it. I mean, they'll, and, and everybody sees Wembenyama. Everybody sees the potential with that young man. It's wild that Justin Simmons is still unemployed. Is he just being too stubborn or is it something else going on behind the scenes? Uh, it feels like a Dalton Reisner situation where he was, well, first of all, he's making a lot of money with the Broncos. So you're not going to make that. And then, well, how much, how much should I get? And likely my guess, it's a guess. This is a guess. My guess is that he just overpriced himself for the market. And there were a lot of safeties available. And in all honesty, you just don't need, it's great that he's great at his job. I'm not saying he's not great at his job. It's just that you can get away with paying a guy who's not maybe as good, but it costs you much less. And you really don't lose that significant amount of production. You don't. So he earned everything. He's great at his job, but the job itself just doesn't have that same value. So, so it's actually, it's, 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 I guess it's kind of wild and kind of not wild at the same time. It's wild to the degree that he was such a big part, seemingly, of the Broncos here for so long. You think, oh my God, he's, you know, certainly he's going to get picked up. And then you realize, oh, um, hmm. And then you just realize that these guys get old before your eyes. It happens very quickly. And you're an eight year pro. I mean, it feels like, oh, you got plenty of time left. Not so much. You make it as a pro athlete for eight years. You've done really well. You've done really well. Uh, are you a fan of UFC, DMAC? Will you watch UFC 300 tomorrow? Uh, I used to be a much bigger fan of UFC, and um, I used to watch Tough all the time. Um, I don't know. Uh, I, I, I won't be watching that tomorrow. No. I don't, I don't care, I, but, but I'm not anti UFC either. The, the, the issue I had with UFC is that it all just felt kind of the same over and over and over again. I mean, just, and UFC is so hard. A lot of these guys, it's so difficult to get to the top. Once they get there, it's just kind of like, I, I mean, we're, we're, you know, they don't, first of all, they don't fight that much once they get there. And second of all, they just, you know, either they don't stick around or they stick around too long. It's over quickly. I was <laughs> the last time I was really into it was kind of when Ronda Rousey was like a phenomenon. Remember that? Like she was like incredible. She couldn't be beat. And then Holly Holm just kicked the shit out of her. And I was like, whoa. And then that was done. They're like, there was no, that's it. <laughs> Cause once you get to the top and then you get hammered, it's not like, oh, I'll, I'll fight my way back. No. A lot of times it was so hard to get to the top that once you lose, it's like, that's it. It's over. <laughs> so whatever. Justin Simmons value to his team is highly underappreciated. He made the D go. Okay. I mean, what D the, the defense that didn't make the playoffs for eight straight years. I mean, the Broncos didn't just, Missed the playoffs every year with Justin Simmons. They had a losing record every year except for his rookie year. And they went nine and seven and missed the playoffs. You understand? Like Justin Simmons, as a core player, never mind, didn't go to the playoffs, never was part of a winning record. You know, there was a time in Broncos history where they had more Super Bowl appearances than losing records. That's gone. Uh, Corey Sandhagen, 135 pound, top five contender, went to Smoky Hill High School. No shit. No kidding, really. I did not know that. What year? How old is he? Oh, that's you got my interest. Damn it, Bobby. I'll look that up. Sandhagen. Corey Sandhagen. Okay. I mean, he could be, uh, well, depending on his age, could be friends with one of my kids. 
Oh, he looks a little bit older. How old is he? He's 31. Oh, so he, he would not have crossed over with my kids. 135 pounds. Oh, my God. That is incredible. From Aurora, Colorado. Holy shit. Well, let me look into him. Uh, ba -ba -ba, Phantom weight. Born and raised in Aurora, Colorado. Attended Smoky Hill High School. We were on the basketball team. This boy has been playing from his youth. How tall is he? 5'11". Wow. Well, shit, man. I did not know that. Well, I got a guy. Corey Sandhagen. Damn, man. That's awesome. That is fantastic. I, I'm i sorry. I did not know that. Well, wow. Okay. I feel stupid that I didn't know that. Thank you for bringing that to my attention. Corey Sandhagen, my guy. Oh, that's really cool. That's cool. My younger son's really into UFC. There's Kelsey Wingert. I think that's how you say her name. So for the Rockies, um, because of the way they do their TV stuff, they really don't have extensive pregame shows. They don't have a studio. So any anything they do pregame and postgame is, is pretty abbreviated and usually just from the field or from the dugout as they're doing here today. So pretty big difference. I mean, it looks cool. She's doing the entire pregame show. It's about five minutes long, and bam, here we go. Game starts. So we go Tovar playing short, Ryan McMahon at third, Chris Bryant, the DH, Diaz catching, Jones left field. Montero's playing first base, Brendan Rodgers at second, Toglia in right field, and Brenton Doyle at center field. That's your lineup tonight for the Rockies. God, I think, you know, it's so funny. I was talking to my wife about this the other day. Um, I really love what I'm doing, period. Like, no, no desire. I love doing the digital stuff. <clears throat> love working at altitude. Love it. Ah, Kevin Gaussman on the, he went to, well, he went to, Gaussman went to um, Grandview. Oh, okay. Got some Colorado connections here. I think Kevin Gossman went to Grandview, right? I believe he did. Yeah, we're getting some Centennial League action here. Gaussman, Blue Jays, right? Yeah, yeah, I went to, went to Grandview. <laughs> oh, my God, so funny. 33. There you go. Major League pitcher, Gaussman, right up the road, right? I mean, just a couple miles from my house. Well, that's cool. I mean, I know he's been um, a major leaguer for a long time, but still, that's that's cool. Where did he go to college? LSU. That's pretty cool. Played in the Cape Cod League. Oh, man, that is so awesome. First pitch to strike the Tovar. It's a cool place, Toronto, for the games. Um, oh, Tovar. Is that gone? Oh, warning track power. Almost got it. Bo Bichette playing short. Vlad at first, Biggio. So you got Bichette, Biggio, and Guerrero. Those are three. We got the Nepo infield for uh, for the uh, for the for the Blue Jays. All right, and I got uh, Ryan Mack up sitting three eighty three. Couple of dingers, nine, nine RBI. I mean, he's having a really good start to the year, obviously, with uh, the walk-off granny on opening day. I 
I, I would, um, it's, it's, I, I never really wanted to do play by play. That was never on my radar. It's never a big deal for me, but you know what? In my, uh, in my twilight broadcasting years, if I could do anything, it would be major league baseball radio, not TV, major league baseball radio play by play. I would love that. I love the pace of it, the storing, t- the storytelling aspect of it. Um, and I would be thrilled to do Rockies games. And, you know, once um, I'd say mid 60s or so, I could do that. I, I could do that job literally forever. And there have been play by play guys who have <laughs> who have done the work through their 80s. You could do it. It sounds good. An older voice doing uh, play by play sounds pretty cool, especially with baseball. Maybe in particular with baseball. Yeah, it's been sets. Here's the three, two. McMahon puts it up in the air. Short of the warning track to center field. Can of corn, two down. So two batters in a row flying out deep to the outfield, but keeping it in play, keep it in the air. Gaussman has the first two Rockies. Set back to the dugout where he'll face Chris Bryant. This is my audition right here. Chris Bryant hitting a staggering 100 on the season. Outside corner, strike one. Two outs top of the first with the Jays and the Rocks. It's what it sounds like, doesn't it? I mean, for the most part, right? Brian, one home run on the year. Gaussman sets. Here's the 1-1. One, one. Swing and a miss for strike two. I I do a lot of long pauses, too, in my broadcasting. Chris Bryant. May have been a worse acquisition than Russell Wilson. That's touch and go, whether that was a worse decision or Russell Wilson. Hitting third today in the lineup. Ball in the dirt, two and two. (laughs) How do you just keep going, right? Uh, He's 29, I think. Yeah, you're talking about the, uh, uh, that guy, yeah. There's actually a lot of Colorado UFC fighters. I've heard that. Swing and a miss. Bryant goes down on a high heater. And after a half inning of play in Toronto, Canada, the Rockies and Jays are scoreless. We'll be back on the DMAC network with Ryan Feltner taking the mound for the Rockies. Brought to you by Ed Prey, the real estate, the number one trusted real estate team in Colorado. EdPrather.com. Ed's going to sell your home just like he sold mine. So that's the thing with baseball. The rhythm is this. Everything high and then low. Ed pray the real estate. Here's the 2-2. And swing and a miss. Everything with baseball starts high and then kind of ends low. Line drive to center field. Caught by the center fielder. Two away. Uh, You're hired. Keep the snark intact. That would be his start. Wouldn't that be great if you could actually just be the snarky baseball announcer? Rockies looking to win a game at some point. Here's the one, two strike three. What else did you expect? Back with more Rockies action after this. Uh, DMAC, how did the Rockies solve the pitching problem? Just seems impossible. Well, that, that actually has not been the problem. For the past five games, you, they're just losing close games. They're not, they're pitching just fine. You lose a game at home at Coors Field three to two. That's not bad pitching. It's bad managing. I've, I've tried to point out multiple times how bad Bud Black is as a manager. And it's just, I mean, either everybody says, well, it's just the Rockies stink and who cares? It's like, well, I don't think it's, a, you know, you know, sell the team. It's like, how about manage the game? 
Lineup for the Blue Jays, George Springer, Vlad Jr., Bo Bichette, Justin Turner, Kevin Biggio, Alejandro Kirk, Dalton Varsho, Isaiah Kiner, Falafala, and, uh, and I didn't read that quick enough. All right, let's see here. Good afternoon. Hot take asked uh, when Wemby gets real good, Jokic versus Wemby will be the Manning versus Brady of the NBA. The talent merging in the NBA is making it way more popular now. Yeah, I'm looking forward to the game tonight. No doubt about it. I love watching Wemby Yama. Wemby Yama. Wemby Yama. I'll get it right eventually. I love watching them. Um, of course, I love watching Yoke. And, um, and that's going to get going here in a little bit. So I'm going to Bid you a fond farewell. Thank you for watching. Uh, hang out live. We'll be back with five to go in the Rockies or in the um, Nuggets game. We'll see how this game progresses. Maybe I'll give you a little bomb in the eighth. We'll see if things time out. But it's um, no score through an inning and a third with the Rockies and Blue Jays on the DMAC. Kill you with truth.